welcome back. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Those Games, and we are in part two of the dialogue system for Game Maker Studio. In this part, we are going to be showing you that uh, what we've got so far is great for displaying one message, but it's not even perfect for that. I went in and I altered the <clears throat> my dialogue variable for the robot, and I made it extremely long. So now if we run it, it's going to show you that it's not actually going to display properly. It's going to go outside of the sprite because the message is too long. And what we want to do in this part is split this message up into multiple parts and have it be able to be shown when the player presses space. So part one will be what shows up first. Part two, you press space, go on to that. So we're going to go ahead and jump into this. So in the dialog system, go ahead and we're going to add in two more global variables. They're going to be called index one and index two. These we are going to use to know exactly where we are when we are uh, showing dialog. So inside of Sarah, come into the step event for the collision detection, and we're going to set index one equal to zero and index two equal to zero as well. Because when Sarah first talks to an NPC of any kind, we're going to be starting at zero, zero, because that will be the primary message. Then inside of the script, let's change this right here, the indexes to index one and index two. Now they're both still zero, zero, so if we run it, it would work fine. But now we can change it for when we call this script the next time, because it's not going to stay the same every single time we call it. Now we want to come down here because we are going to split this message up and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. First though, we need to go into the dialog box, create a new variable inside of here, and we're going to name it message index. And that's going to know exactly where we should be displaying because we're going to turn my message into a var into an array. So we're going to come in here and we're going to actually say message index. So we're going to turn my message into an array. Now, inside of this script, we're going to set message index equal to zero because that's where it's always going to start is at the first index of my message. And then we need to do a big if statement here that we're going to parse up the string message to several different parts inside of this array. Now, follow along as closely as you can, but remember I've got this project in the comments so you can download that and it'll have comments so you can look at exactly what it's doing. Now I'm going to explain as we go along because this is a little bit complicated. So we're going to check a function called string height ext. And what this function does is it gets the height of a string with the padding and the width between the lines as we are already displaying them. So we want my message. And 16 is the separation which we already set. And the uh, and it's the max length right here. Now we want to say if this is greater than the max height. Basically saying if the string my message is going to be longer than the max height that we've set right here, then we need to do something about that and split it up. So we're going to say text height is equal to string height, oh, can't type, string height ext. I'm going to say message giver dot my dialog, and this will be index one, index two. 16, which is the same separation, and then max length, which is the same thing we're using each time. But we just want to get the height that's actually being calculated here. And we're going to say amount equals text height divided by sprite height minus 48. So we're going to see exactly how much we need to divide this up. We're going to do one more variable here called starting at. And it's going to start at zero the very first time that we split this up. So imagine that we have this super long block of text and we know that it is going to be um, 
this amount right here actually gets it and says, how too long is it? Is it two times as long as it should be? Is it three? Is it 2.75? That's what this amount variable right here is getting. And so with that amount variable, we're going to create a for loop and says for as many times as it is too big, split it up, save that inside of my message, and then we're going to be able to display that properly. So we're going to use a for loop. We say i equals zero, while i is less than amount, increase i. So now we're going to say my message i, and we're going to use a string copy. What string copy does is pretty simple, is it takes a string, copies it from a start point to an end point. So we're going to say message giver dot my dialog index one index two and we need to know where we're starting at which is starting at pretty pretty simple and this part's a little more complicated we want to go until the string string length is the correct height of our sprite so follow along I'm gonna say string length oh all right We're gonna say string length message giver dot my dialog index one index two then parentheses and we're gonna divide that by the amount. Okay. So this is a really long line of text, but basically what we are doing right here is we are saying the index of my message, which starts at zero is equal to the string length divided by the amount that we need. So if it is two times as long as we'll display inside of our object, it's going to cut that in half and then copy that over. And then the last thing we need to do is say starting at is equal to string length message giver dot my dialog index one index two <clears throat> divided by amount so we change where we're starting at each time okay that's a lot to follow along with hopefully that makes sense this is not a simple and easy thing to do though this took me a very long time to figure out exactly the best way to do it and that will work for strings that are long. But we need to add an, an else statement right here because if a string isn't very long, then we need to set it up so that it will take that message and to still display it properly. So all we have to do is say else my message, message index, which is zero, is going to equal, just copy any of these right here, this uh, message giver. So then we've got this. So this if will take place if it's longer, and this one will take place if it will actually fit within one dialog box. So let's see exactly what happens when we run it now. All right. Okay, so there is our message. And we can't look at the next one right now, so we need to come in to the uh, <clears throat> dialog box and add a step event, because it is going to check when we should be moving forward. So add a piece of code. I'm going to describe it. And we're going to say if keyboard check pressed VK space. Then we want to say plus plus message index. Because what that's going to do is say if it's split up over two messages, it will show the first one the first time we plus, press space right here. And then if we press space again, you can see it moves through and there's the two differentiating it. Now if I press space again, we're going to get an error because we are trying to go over what has been allocated for my message array. 
because it only goes up to one or two, technically, depending on where you start counting. And so we need to put in a, a, an if statement right here. And once we do this, this is where we're going to end this tutorial. So we're going to say if message index is greater than or equal to array length 1D of my message. So <clears throat> if it is longer and we've pressed space, that means that we are ready to be done. We're going to say with obj dialog box. So we do this, and that's great and all, but it destroys it at the very same time. It's still checking that we press spacebar, and then it creates another one. So we need to come in here, and we're actually going to set Sarah's alarm. We're going to set alarm zero equal to 10. And then in Sarah, add the alarm, add some code. <clears throat> And so in this alarm, we're going to set Sarah is talking to equal to false. And we're going to come into the step of hers in the collision detection. And we're going to set this, we're going to put an and here and say if she's not talking. So the exclamation point stands for false, like not is talking. We press run this. And then it will destroy the object and set her be able to move afterwards. Okay. And we can go to any of these guys and we can talk to them and move through. I can't move now. I press spacebar, it destroys it, and then it sets me able to move right away and we're all good. So if all you wanted to do was show a message, this is everything you would need. Uh, and, and a sign, an NPC, someone that doesn't have a very important part it'll split up whatever message they want to send and the player can cycle through it and when they're done talking they can move again. Done and done. But we don't have anything to actually talk back to the NPC yet. So in the next part we're going to look at adding in choices to make it more dynamic and to make it a real dialogue system because this is really just showing text in a fancy way but we want to be able to interact with the NPCs. So I hope you'll join me for that next part. And until then, have fun making great games, and I will talk to you later.